we can truly, truly change our narrative and that's what we'd really like to take on as coaching. Uh, so first I'll tell you who is a coach, if I really want to break it down into the steps. There is a coach in each one of us. So if I say there's a coach in each one of you, any thoughts on who is the coach? I'm just an identity here as a coach, but there's a coach in each one of you. Sorry? Little further or little deeper, I'll say. Yeah, the observer. That witness in us is the coach. We all have a witness, you know, you're witnessing, you can either say you're observing me or you can say you're judging me or you're assessing me or listening. But who is that I who's doing it? There's an observer in us. Now what happens is our thought, when I, that's why I said that narrative of ours blocks us from accessing that observer. Now when that narrative blocks us from accessing the observer, what is an external coach doing is acting as a mirror, partnering with you to access your observer, to pierce through those, that filter, that lens, you know, that filter that gets created with experiences of life and pierce through it to say, hey, is that just a perception or is that a reality? And that's what an external coach is doing, is helping the, awaken the coach in you. Now, when that happens in partnership, there is a trust to be vulnerable because, you know, you, we all create an identity based on that narrative. I mean, there's an introduction which we go with. This is who I am. This is the life I've lived. So there is an identity that gets created. Now, suddenly, some, you know, you say, but life's not going. No, we go through our sways up and down, obviously. Uh, so... Going through the sways and agitate, you know, at some point my mind was really agitated. Ki yaar, zindagi aise nahi hoti hai. Uh, I am one idealist dreamer, and I think what this industry, my perception of it, one got squashed, so I'm not going to talk about that. <laughs> but what this industry does best of is sell dreams. It sells dreams, it makes other people's dreams come true. If I have a dream which I'm envisioning and I want to portray it out, who better than to have you all set the stage for me? You all set that stage. So making someone's dream come re become a reality is the best gift you can give. Now, as that dreamer, I have felt life was a breeze as a kid. All of us, you know, you play, you make friends, you bounce here, you bounce there. Aaj katti kari kal, kisi se aaj gussa hue kal maan liye. There is, it's a minute to minute relationship that's occurring and there's no problem with life. Hit 20, 30 and suddenly that head is so full of thoughts. Uh, you don't want anymore. And actually the song says it perfectly. I ain't want no more thoughts. I don't want you to have thoughts. In fact, what coaching does is reduce those thoughts. Uh, because we collect so many subconsciously, we don't even realize the quality, the quantity, and our direction of thoughts. It's all outward and keeps increasing. The more you're running out, the more your thoughts are increasing all the time. Because that identification with all the different things is happening, different relationships and so on. So what is each time the coach doing with you? It's saying, okay, I'm your mirror. Your life's not going well, but it can go well. It did go well. It does go well at, on many occasions. How can you always make it go well? And I'm sure everybody wants to be successful always. Question is, what's my definition of success? Is my definition of success just getting the outcome I decided on? Now that to kisi ki bhi nahi hoti hai. Block, even a Bollywood or even nobody gets it, okay? Uh, no one gets an outcome right always. It's not possible. That's not the law of nature. Now you're effectively trying to control nature by saying, I want, the, I want to be a, have that outcome correct always. How if you have to redefine that perspective of coaching, we say, okay, how about 
I redefine the concept of success only. And guess what? Our brain has the capacity to redefine it. But did we ever sit back to redefine it? And that's the beauty of coaching is really understanding that I can redefine any perspective which works for me and move forward. Now, if I change the perspective of success from outcomes, you know, uh, having a de uh, defined outcomes to saying, okay, I want to be a learner always, or how can I keep experiencing life always? I want to be an experiencer of life, and every day I want to experience something new. You're always successful, <laughs> because every moment gives you an opportunity to experience something new. Every interaction is a new experience. Curiosity, brilliant. Thank you for that. So that curiosity, when we ignite it, is what changes life. That curiosity somewhere with time gets lost. It goes into a place called I know. Because those learnings keep coming on top, 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 top. And we forget to shed what is not relevant. Now when you don't shed what's not relevant, there's no place left. Because the head is so full. So I call it like, you know, looking into your computer and saying, how can I make file folders? Now, if you keep dumping, you'll never find information. So it's really sitting back to declutter your brain. Organizing it. How about I give the mic to you? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was just on a light. And you're very welcome, of course. Uh, so that's really what one is doing with coaching is, so what is coaching is partnering with another person. What your parents tell you all the time, somebody charges you for it. <laughs> the difference is, the difference, however, is a trained coach has, creates that space which is non-judgmental, where you feel judged by your parent because you are, you know, there are, again, that's a perception. What is the coach coming with? No, we perceive our parents are judging us. Are they truly judging us? Are they simply trying to push us? Now, because that barrier perception has got created, there is a part of the brain which says, Mene toji sunnaini. Or why is the mother always interfering or the father always having to push around? So you say, Theek hai. Now here comes a person saying, I'm a professional and I'm going to. Now here is what the relationship does. I listen, sense any meaning in your conversation. What am I looking to listen? Because even your other people in your life have perceptions. If I listen to you as an observer, without adding judgments, assumptions, expectations, any, any interpretations to the conversation, and I only listen to the emotion. What each one of us is really seeking to do is be understood. Now, if I am able to understand you at your core, and you therefore are able to, when I mirror that back, are able to understand yourself at your core in terms of your strengths, and what, how your strengths have actually carried you through your life. And how your strengths can not just carry you through, but make you a winner in life. Because sometimes either we are not even cognizant of which strength works for us most of. Or we are not aware as to which strength we are overarching, either over-utilizing or under-utilizing. Upar, it's all cluttered. Kabi bed ke socha nahi. You know, you're so busy thinking about the work you're doing. How often do we sit back with ourselves? And when we sit back with ourselves, um, there's a term which was given to me by my coach, which she used to call it video on demand. She says, Wo play button dabao, and you're re basically replaying your own <laughs> memories back and forth. Either you're going in the past and bashing somebody up, or you're going in the forward and making yourself the hero. There's one of the two things going on. So that little video on demand goes on. Now, either you can entertain yourself with it, or you can drown in it. 
and that's the choice we can make that is that video making me a victim is it making me my hero and then am i so caught in playing the hero that i think that this you know i can never have any other way but can i always be the hero of my life of course because i can keep changing perspectives that's the beauty of language and that's the beauty of the brain it has the capacity to keep changing perspectives but am i igniting that learner am i aware how i'm thinking am i aware what's working for me am i aware what's blocking me am i aware what is my strength am i aware what is not working for me that's where a coach really plays the role of a mirror and with as that mirror what keeps partnering with you to making you aware of this whole facet of yourself know your true self you're able to actually design a success strategy for yourself i mean all of us are great at saying that in my business this model works we put a success strategy we model our business we know we tweak that model every 3 years we work through it hey but i'm the first product here i'm the product who's actually designing the product out there so if that product needs to be updated so do i need to be updated because i'm the generate the creator of that product outside and that's constant reinvention which happens from inside out is truly what makes life a journey of winning a journey of living with ease a journey of living as that observer who creates the capacity to reinvent in moment like this and that's what children do that's why that playfulness of the child comes out because hey you know kabhi gire kabhi uthe that's life but am i willing to get up and just dust it off and move on or am i holding on to that hurt and uh, limiting myself so that's coach that's the coaching part and now what's the benefit of it so i'll ask you all as you all heard me so i'll ask you first <laughs> my curious learner what would you see as the benefit of all of this benefit of I think is it change your perspective uh, of looking at things because when you educate yourself the way you like look at things changes so nazariya badalta hai kind of you know that helps very good thank you i'm going to pass the mic to you yeah, me no so i um, you become more focused i think coaching allows you to the input and output becomes better what you are taking in what you are taking out as a result i think um, and um, and the the faster the, the i think the speed of um, corrections of what you are doing i think that keeps on becoming better with that i feel fabulous so here i would like to take a word from you when you said what you are taking in actually you become even more aware of ki should i even absorb this in or should i just let it pass by Anybody else would like to Arun can I sure. uh, from my point of view it uh, the decluttering which you talk about when you're sharing with the coach and when when you're listening it allows you to start focusing on what matters and uh, moving away from what uh, doesn't matter for you uh, a lot of times all the challenges are in our, in our life is because we focus on stuff which does not matter for you right so, and and that focus really helps over here sorry sultan i realized as soon as i said it you can give the mic yeah that's what i'm saying i will now that i took your name and i <laughs> as she rightly says uh, the perspective uh, changes uh, the way you look at things and i think uh, there'll be a lot of self improvement it'll be more on a frog uh, out of the well story because we think from our perspective all the time and once you have a mirror image it gives you a better learning so the frog becomes the prince kind of <laughs> <laughs> anyone else from this side we've had some sharing i know arun sir but anyone else from here would like to add to it
Can I ask you? So maybe once we know, we say it out loud, we realize that whatever we are thinking, maybe it's not important and you get a clear picture as to what you were visualizing as a problem, maybe it's not a problem at all. Very well said. Actually, you solve your own problems because that mirror is just listening to you and when you're listening to yourself, half of it is over and done with and the solution just appears. Anyone else would like to add to this? So I'd like to invite, is there a question you all would like to ask? If I was coached, what could it do for me? So as an industry, I understand there are challenges. As I said, I see your... In okay, one of the... Okay. Uh, that's one I'll take. Um, Time management. Okay. Innovation. Innovation. Yeah. Creativity. And I'll ask you, what do you... I also say leadership, people management. Mm -hmm. Be able to build people. Build yeah. a team. Team building. Now, I see an industry which... It, how young or old would you call yourselves as an industry? Not more than 10 to 15 yeah. years. As a structured organization, that is EMA. No, before. So event, oh, man, 15 yeah. years. So it's been an explosive. Of companies, yeah, yeah. Right. As by and large. Teenager. Yeah. <laughs> now that, are you a rebellious one? <laughs> <laughs> and maybe that's why you have time management issues. <laughs> no, so. Um, I'll ask you again, when you talk of stress, so as a young industry, what do you think causes the stress most of? Are boss, mat bolo. Hame abhi bola gaya. Hame abhi subah, abhi ghanta pehle bola gaya. That's a perception that I need to correct. <laughs> so, <laughs> now that you take up separately. <laughs> So, okay. Uh, so, if you say, let's go with that flow for now. <laughs> um, if you say stress comes due to di being disorganized, what? I, I think also because a lot of uh, professions have a known path, hmm. a marked territory through which you navigate and then become a professional. That's through your education, not through practice, right? But as in, in an events industry, anyone from any space comes in and then just starts doing it, right? So, so there's no organized structure or a path. So everyone does it their way. So if you have 10 people working in your organization, they would have come from 10 different backgrounds, think in different ways. It is not so organized, but it works, take work from Which is a strength and its weakness, actually. Okay, so here is where I'll tell you, coaching also has no entry barrier. Sab ban jate And the, sorry, the, ban sakte hain. It has no entry barrier, it has, you know, there are many. So, put differently, I'll say, is that the life of an entrepreneur that you all have taken on? It is. It is. Now, when you choose to be an entrepreneur, so, you know, when you suddenly, anybody can be an entrepreneur. And that's the life you all have chosen to be, take on. Now, what in your definition is an entrepreneur. Who is an entrepreneur? You know, I totally love you for being here. <laughs> she's a good student in the class. The class. No, you know, she oh, is. <laughs> no, what she's doing for me is putting all of you into trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Taking ownership. What else? And I'm going to expand that. Okay, so if you had to take ownership for your stress and passionately solve that problem, how would you solve it now? You should have a me time. Abhi, usko. 
Let him come. This. <laughs> you are going to give the benefit of that answer to everybody. <laughs> So yeah, the questions for you, Sultan. So, so like an entrepreneur does, take the bull by its horns. And own up for it. And what's the bull? It. No, what's the bull you it. need to take by the horns? The stress. The stress that. Uh, so what is causing what the stress? Causing the stress is not outside. Yeah, normally inside. Your thoughts. Yeah. Are you taking that thoughts by the? Are you holding on to those thoughts? Because why is there stress? That because you are allowed. Important when you hold the bull by its horns. You need to know which is the back side and the front side. <laughs> right? So that means you need to understand the bull. Listen, the matador is. He can <laughs> even get killed here. In <laughs> are you a trained matador? You've <laughs> seen it for sure. You've seen it. I have seen it too. That's why I asked. Are you trained? <laughs> so, your thoughts. What is causing the stress? What's running? What's stress? I mean, it's those thoughts which are running, but there's nothing else. Bar to sab chal rahe the, lab, the unorganized segment that you're talking about, you can't change them. You can't control them. What is in your control is how you take that on. No, listen, every client wants it as of yesterday. I get that, totally. <laughs> so I understand. There is a moment-to-moment -moment change that is occurring in your life. And there is a moment-to-moment -moment expectation, assumption, presumption, deliverables. All the kankar are around, which is causing chaos. You, make, you pave those stones into a road or you let them poke you is up to you. It's really up to you. So how... So the bull by the horns is taking that control of those thoughts. The more I let those thoughts run out and run away wherever they want, are, am I commanding my thoughts? Are my thoughts commanding me? And that's the defining line. So time management again. Now you tell me, how would you resolve it for yourself? Now you had one word for everything. This time you can't escape me. <laughs> you can't. Planning. And what else? Prioritizing, planning. Now when you plan and prioritize, before all of that, let's take a step back. You plan and prioritize on the basis of what? Of? Yourself. Your own capability. How much capacity and capability do I have based on which do I plan and prioritize? Now, I have a friend, okay, she is a mountaineer. She's been to Mount Everest. She's done the seven, six out of the seven peaks. Uh, I met her. She's, I don't know if any, some of you may have heard of her, Sangeeta Behel. I met her and, you know, I got very enthused. Yeah, peak chodo, hiking to karni chahiye. Sat back, thought about it, and I said, is my body capable of hi even doing the hike? So, I was so chabied with the idea. I looked for a trainer, I did all that. But there was a part of me which kept oscillating. Why? Because there was a real me inside. There's a dream idealist outside who says, yeah, if she can do it, why can't I? But there is a realist inside me who says, you know, I know I can't do it. So, shh, let's sit back. <laughs> That part, that planning. So when we do planning and prioritizing also, there's a step back that needs to be taken. Yeah. 
you had, sorry, if you can repeat, innovation and creativity. How can we be innovative and creative? So build on what we've heard and let me see what you come up with. What could support you to be innovative and creative? Not that I don't see so much innovation in this industry. My God, it's mind boggling. Every stage looks different. Every set look looks different. Every prop looks different. There is never a repeat. Uh, so there is so much creativity that I see. Yet your question. So now. Yes, you're creating experience. Your question comes from where? In this, in R&D. Okay. Get into a good team, which has got content. Okay. A lot of agencies uh, don't do that. So investing on a good content, investing in R&D helps. And would you like to, are you already doing it? Are you yeah, pioneered in it? Or okay. So, I'd like to leave you with a thought here on this thought of innovation. We all have the capacity to recreate our thoughts and therefore re-innovate ourselves. Now, if you recreate your thought and re-innovate yourself, everything outside gets re-innovated, gets innovate, recreated. And that's the power we possess. So on that note, I'll pass it back to Priya. Great round of applause for Ashu. Thank you very much for that. Um, I'd like to now um, get a Sultan Sayyid Ahmed up here on stage, Deepak Chaudhary, and Arun Kumar. <coughs> Each of these gentlemen are going to share with you an interesting facet of what we're going to be doing under the education uh, initiative of EMA. Um, Sultan, I'd like you to take it away from there. and. Uh, talk about the first initiative, which is about the train the trainer or helping institutions get more, creating students that are more relevant for our industry. Sure. Thanks, Priya. Uh, so I'm going to keep this very short as what we're trying to do through EMA. And I would like to you know, have a lot more responses from you uh, as to what you recommend needs to be done. What we uh, identified when Sanjeev Prasricha and I think Deepak and me, the three of us, were trying to talk about how do we uplift the industry? How do we educate the industry? How do we bring in more relevant people who can add more value to the work that we're doing? And that's the larger problem that we're solving. So we looked back at what we've done as EMA in the past 10 years. So what we've done is we've done a lot of functional training. We've organized uh, training programs for production. We've organized training programs for business development, for presentation skills. Uh, we've organized training programs on safety in the industry. We've done a lot of that, and we categorize that as functional training, which is very relevant for our existing teams so that they are uh, you know, upgraded and updated with what's happening around, not just in the country, but across the world. So that's one of the pieces that will continue. And when we looked at the challenge, I think the biggest challenge our industry is facing is good quality people coming in. Who is the new event manager that's coming in? Who's the new team member that's coming in? Right? And where are they coming from? Thankfully, in these 12 years, we've seen a dramatic change in the way uh, the whole idea of arts education is perceived in this country. Would you relate to that? Today, uh, liberal arts is a big thing. Uh, in fact, entrepreneur courses are being taught. You know, sometimes uh, I've done my entrepreneur masters from the MIT in Boston, right? And I did that after having run a company for almost what eight or ten years. And today, when I see a, a 18 year old doing a three year program in a college, now this guy is studied to be an entrepreneur. Yeah. Dude, he can't work because he's supposed to be an entrepreneur. Right? So I feel that there's a challenge in which that particular program is going, and I have a similar problem in the manner in which event management colleges are functioning. And it's anybody's guess, and if you scratch the surface, you realize that the standards are not very high. And Deepak himself is a pioneer in that space, right? With his uh, previous avatar of having run the EMDI, yes. right? Having pioneered, started, and run EMDI, I think you were also. Uh, you know, integrally involved in it for many years. Uh, Deepak came up with, I think, probably the most profound insight. 
and it's very simple and a lot of simple ideas come from a lot of experience. The challenge in India is that we don't have good event management colleges and the biggest problem for an event management college is the faculty. And that is the one piece that we want to go after. We want to raise the standard of the faculty in the event colleges and the event uh, you know, courses that are being offered across the country. So when that idea came about, I got very excited and we started working. This is what we've done on the past two or three months. We figured that one of the things that happens in colleges is what they're teaching, right? What are the topics that are being taught itself? So we're creating something called as the EMA curriculum framework. It's a list of topics that we're going to be identifying and saying, hey, listen, if you're running an institute, if you're running a college, these are the list of topics that you need to cover. Remember, we are a very nascent industry and we're just getting organized. So having that framework gives us an idea, right? And for you, if you're, an, uh, if you're running a college, or if you're going to be a part of a course, so you will be affiliated to EMA, you'll be called an EMA affiliate college or a university, and you'll be following that framework. Remember, it's just a framework. We're not telling you exactly what to do. We're not going down. We're not publishers. We're not going to be publishing books. We're not like a CBSC that's giving you a curriculum. We're giving you a guideline. We're giving you a direction. That's the first step that we've done. We've, we're almost through with that. The second part, which I think is going to be the big uh, you know, game changer for us, is for each one of those topics, we have identified industry experts. So the best of the industry is going to be putting together a course for train the trainer. So starting off in the month of November, mm -hmm. we will have a program, a train the trainer program in Delhi, in December in Bombay, and in January we want to do a train the trainer in Bangalore. The idea is, and after that, go across to the country and do this every year. So I want you to just imagine now, so colleges across the country that are springing up, and by the way, this is just the beginning of the uh, tsunami that I see. I'm going to have loads more colleges that are going to come up. We can now define as to what is the topics that they're going to be teaching. And that if for those topics, we also have master classes created by the masters themselves, some of the best in the industry. And once every year in most of the big cities, we will have a train the trainer program where the colleges can send their faculty. Now, who can attend the train the trainer program? That's also very interesting. There are, we're looking at predominantly three kinds of people, and Deepak is going to talk about the third. The first two are simple, that's why I'll talk about the first two. The first one are faculty who are presently teaching in these event management uh, courses. The second one are people like you and me who are passionate about teaching and want to be associated with institutes and help the next generation of event managers come up, right? So these are the two kinds of people who can be a part of, uh, you know, the, the train the trainer program, right? And apart from that, it could be absolutely anybody. It could be somebody who is a college professor who deals with students right but does not necessarily have a industry experience or it could be somebody from the industry who's got industry experience but does not have teaching experience so we're looking at a variety of people we don't want to bottleneck ourselves and then become the same colleges that have you know ba ba ed ma M ed and then only you can teach we want to bring in a lot of variety so that's predominantly the train the trainer program that we are doing it's a i i would believe that you know, it's 12 years and it looks like really, really fast. How many of you sitting in this room have been around for 10, 12 years, uh, apart from Deepak? Yeah. I mean, it goes fast, right? I remember uh, Goa for the first time 12 years ago and all of us were 12 years younger. And then we talked about, there's one thing that I can assure you, this is what I talked about. And here's the man who creates a lot of IPs. Six, seven years ago, for at least two or three emails, there was one conversation we constantly had. Let's create IP. Let's create IP. Do you remember that? Yeah. Wow. And have you seen in the past couple of days just the number of our fraternity and the number of IPs that are being created? I see exactly the same thing happening with education in the next five or seven years. Right? Where EMA is playing a driving role, I wouldn't say a key role, but a guiding role to these colleges as to what should be taught and what makes a relevant event professional, one. And secondly, training those trainers. So my dream would be that most of the event management colleges, they should have at least one certified EMA trainer from uh, who's attended one of the master classes. 
and uh, once we've gotten this together i think the next step i have a dream i've not yet shared with the with the team is we need to have a lot of these online programs because people are learning this online and how wonderful it would be if you have summit is taking an online course on uh, you know wedding management uh, you know uh, tarsem is talking about how do you manage artists and you've got roshan who's talking about how do you come up with creative ideas now that's going to be a fantastic course right it's very difficult for any individual organization to pull it off but for rima it's very easy and remember all of these guys are going to do it pro bono because all of us are just contributing not as a professional thing but as something that we want to give back to the industry so if you look at ema education approach is going to be at three levels the first level is for the owners managers that is the coaching which is what madam ashu was talking about because our biggest challenge is motivating teams and you know uh, building teams and understanding our teams so that's where i think coaching plays a great role and uh, as owners managers of a lot of our uh, and entrepreneurs it's it's going to be a huge game changer so uh, priya is going to be talking and announcing in the subsequent months as to what are when are those coaching sessions that are going to happen where they're going to happen and so you can jump onto the bandwagon and uh, plan up the second part of it is going to be the functional training which i'm going to request arun to talk a little more about as to what we've done in the past and what we have plans of doing uh, in the coming year and the third part of it is going to be train the trainer and uh, for deepak and me and priya that's going to be the biggest one because that's the newest one and uh, in the next uh, few years we should see a lot of uh, organized structured ema stamped or ema approved i know it's terrible words right we'll find better words for it yeah i think it's something uh, ema experience has been shared with the industry and the educator so that's what we want to do that's the plan yeah, so what i'd like to add to what sultan said here that one of the uh, i think the the key uh, uh, purpose of doing the train the trainer is to ensure that the faculty who is actually communicating this training uh, to students who are who aspirants who are wanting to join the industry prepare them in a manner that they become relevant to people like you who are recruiting them that means when you recruit them you know that they can actually hit the road running that means they don't need to be going through training once again right in very probably this is something that we as part of when i was part of emdi we would have this as a problem that you know teachers are teaching stuff that may or may not be relevant and teachers when they are teaching stuff it may be that the students are not learning enough so there is a lot of thought that we are trying to this is just the first step where we are actually curating the curriculum with the help of industry experts and when i say industry experts it's actually going to be one on one that means i'll be sitting with sultan and asking him all right this is what we want to do on brand activation what else can we talk about on this so once sultan has looked at it we'll talk to one other person another person and three or four people and once this gets done the intention is also not to just then sit on it but review it year on year and even if this nec moves out and these people are not in office beyond us this continues this is a legacy we would like to leave behind for ema and for all its members and for the entire fraternity to benefit from that's the intention the larger and the longer term intention when you um, just mention that i i yeah. realize something i've been working with school kids now for 15 16 years and one of the biggest questions which any school going child has yeah. in their mind why the hell am i studying this mm. right you you've got so many subjects and so many topics i mean you always have this question why the hell am i studying it you would be surprised that event management colleges have curriculums and they're teaching stuff and you're like why the hell are they learning that mm. right that's a simple one it sounds very simple but it's right at the foundation of learning uh, when it comes from people who've done it they're not going to bullshit they're going to talk about stuff which is relevant so every student that's going to an event management college which has an affiliation with ema at least will not have the question why am i learning this and i'd also like to add here that institutions are already doing a, it's not to say that it's not to undermine the efforts that the institutions are making institutions are doing the best that they can but what we are trying to do is aid what they are already Absolutely. doing this is an addition to partner with them to ensure that what they churn out and give back it to the industry or to the country i'd say at large is something that's really meaningful and it's something that can actually multiply in many ways yeah okay that's all the more reason why we need to be doing this you've got some institutes are doing a fabulous job and some that's of them are doing them a are terrible here. job if i if i is anybody here from any of the institutions i can see somebody from pearl academy at the back there yeah uh anybody else from any institution here yeah right yeah yeah rakhi has just stepped out
I'll just finish that point. Yeah. Some of them are outstanding. They're doing a fantastic job and some of them are actually terrible. You know, they're like ridiculous. So because there's no standard, there's no benchmark. So what this could do is kind of bring a benchmark to the industry, which is what we can do. No, we are not a university. We are not going to give a degree. We are not going to give a certificate. We are an industry body which is saying, hey, listen, right. these are the things that the students need to learn to be industry ready. We are not yeah. making a business out of it. It's case more of... Case study. Every okay. session is a case study. Absolutely every session is a case no, study. But uh, like to, to add a little more to train the trainer, um, the real, I've been, um, I have uh, uh, been part of early years uh, of putting it together a school in event management and there was time the industry used to come but uh, focused trainers in any of these cities Bombay Delhi Bangalore where most of the education's uh, event education is case is happening now really if we solve this problem and uh, it will bring in change I think all sitting here also if anybody wants to take this program it's going to be a three-month program with the um, uh, with a focus on uh, coming from the experts and some kind of training will be taught. So, will be minimalistic fees and um, more people from industry coming in will really help the cause. And if, if you become a trainer, finally you want to retire, become as a trainer and teach to these students. I think that's what the focus will be. And yeah, I'd like to invite Arun to share his experience about what all the s uh, South is doing on education. And your experience, I'd like you to also share about CEM. I come from a background of uh, I come from a background of events so four years before we just got a little bit of migration done from events got into exhibitions uh, the way move forward for exhibitions was to learn more about exhibitions IEIA is a international body in exhibition uh, internationally they do a certification course which is called CEM certificate Exhi in exhibition management uh, it's done in around about 17 countries in the world and we were the first batch of CM in India. Uh, we were around about 17 of us and that was a game changer for us. Uh, after 15 years coming back to a classroom, going through a week of training and it literally changed the whole perspective of how exhibitions are done and more on a, from a global kind of a platform. So that drastically changed our perspective towards exhibition and trust me that's built up. Uh, we've our uh, mentors have helped us in building. We've built up three IPs in exhibition. One of them is our flagship brand, which is called the Kitchen India Expo, doing a turnover of around about four crores for this particular year. We are doing the fourth edition in four cities. So I thoroughly agree that education helps at all point of time. And coming to implement Even at this level, you absolutely. know, at managing director level, he was willing to go and reinvent himself and put himself through schooling and learn something new which has aided his business, right? Absolutely. And uh, taking the initiatives of what Sultan and Deepak was talking and what Priya was talking, I'm heading as a Vice President South for EMA. We are, every state head of ours is identifying colleges who are aiding in event management or running courses in event management. To give an example, uh, in Hyderabad, there is a college called NITIM, which has been run by the state government. So they have a complete event management course as rightly said by uh, Sultan, the course, course curriculum, God bless them. So this is where we are kind of identifying colleges and waiting for the curriculum to come out. So the whole team uh, in South is going to implement. We've just tied up with the, uh, Whipple in North has tied up with MAT uh, for the event management course. We've just tied up with one institute in Chennai. Uh, we've just signed up. In fact, we need to give all the details to them. So waiting for the curriculum to uh, come out so that we start the implementation in South. So uh, I also know that there's a gentleman from the Pearl Academy, which is from Delhi, and there are a couple more institutes that people has been working on. And there's Christ University. So the, the, when whoever we've spoken to, they love the idea. I think all colleges are looking for an industry connect. And here's an industry which is kind of reaching out to the colleges. And I think what better way of uh, shaking hands and helping each other out. So do you have any questions to go for us? Because we are running out of time and anything that you might want to ask. Yes, please. Maybe the ones at the back might not get you. Yeah. So, uh, like uh, we say to ourselves, we our industry is changing itself a lot. You know, every time we are also evolving ourselves to stay in the game and everything. So when we 
put up those fine prints for the institute and for the learning. How are we going to do that? Because in the institute part, you can put up fine prints and you know, it's going to stay for four or five years. By the time industry is changing so fast, how are we going to cope up with that? Priya spoke about uh, reviewing every year. Uh, yeah. She said we'll review every year on the curriculum. Yeah. So we're not creating a, a syllabus. Just a framework I'm talking We're creating a framework yeah. which will have topics. Yes. Right? And those will be reviewed every year. All right. right? And the examples of those topics will be given by industry experts. As it's by industry, I think it's more relevant of today's. And, it, uh, and the industry every year is relevant. So I'm saying it's no, nobody else teaching, it's industry who's teaching. Yeah. Right? For example, this year in the curriculum, we might have something called as IP. It will continue, but tomorrow we might have something called a CP. I don't even know, right? So we will keep... That's where what you're saying is what we're trying to do. Remember, if I'm a student of an engineering college in this country, I happen to be an engineer, and if I were go to go to a college today to study IT, I still don't learn iOS or Android. It's a, not a part of my curriculum. And all of us know that some of the max, the large number of jobs that are available is for app development and in the space of Android and iOS, but engineering is not teaching that. There's a huge disconnect. Hopefully our disconnect, our disconnect will always be there, but hopefully it's not more than a year because we want to review that every year. Yeah. Is actually setting up a process of review so that's the intention that I am going to bring to the table and saying that you know once we've created the curriculum we've been able to impart it to institutions and to the faculty who come whoever wishes to learn there is an intention to review this every year and how to review is also going to be a process it's not going to be by no it's going to be thought through that okay fine this is what's relevant let's put it into the curriculum. I'm, right? I'm not aware of any other industry which has been so proactively trying to do this in an organized manner as an association or as a body. Because I don't know if all the you know, people in the fashion industry have come together and said, let's go back to the fashion uh, you know, colleges and help them. Or somebody, you know, the film industry has come together and said, let's do this with the film schools. No, they have done it. In fact, the film industry has... Manish, would you like to add to that? The film industry has done it. Journalism has done it. Happy to have you. Come, come, come forward, please. Manish is here from the Pearl Academy. Yeah. Yeah, hi, Manish here. As uh, Sultan said, like uh, there are lots of things are coming in event industry, and like it's uh, an association with EMA we are having, like Pearl Academy this time, and it's been four years I'm taking event management uh, as a course, but it, it is just a part of some subject, and the uh, thing is that I am from an event industry background. I'm heading many events like Fashion Week, India Art Fair, Comic Con, as design and as production also. So, which I think uh, I was able to take my students to my site. Uh, as a live example for them which is required because event is not uh, to be taught in class so it's not theoretical but yes it's theoretical because I have many many presentations with me to go through how to take uh, event ahead how to do design how to produce how to create uh, the event logos in fact how to create a property out of it and also it's really helping students just because of my experience but yes now EMA is there so I think it will be a great initiative uh, for Pearl and EMA so let's see some big thing happening yes there are many students which have rolled uh, with us it's a one year uh, course we are having uh, at our college so I think things are coming uh, in good way how many students? And I think uh, some uh, uh, 10 to 15 have just uh, rolled in. So let's see, waiting for some more to come. And like, th because they are hearing uh, from uh, our courses also, from the people also, and they, are, they really want to be. And because the Pearl is there, it's a name. So they want to be with Pearl. So it's not like any other kind of institute where, like, as many said, ki event hota hai, sikhate hai, but pata nahi kya sikhate hai, nahi sikhate hai. Main bhi bolta tha bahut, uh, like when people come to me in even when they intern with me on fashion week or india art fair so hardly they know anything and also uh, let's see I, I i'll be able to do justice to it with ema and like yes we need a full association with ema so Great. with whipple and all like uh, it's an uh, interesting fact that whipple roped uh, yeah. us in and the uh, whipple has taken a lot of efforts yes and i think uh, the north whipple and prerna both Prerna's of them yes. from the north have been really pushing themselves and uh, they are planning to have a faculty from ema also for us so the course is in a developing stage so i think this uh, week will be finalizing with these things and let's see 
Thanks a lot. Thanks, Manish. Thank uh, well, I think we've, yes, please. Is this still a, a big challenge Thank what we have also experienced, you know, while interviewing most of the students uh, from the event institute who have actually a good curriculum, but when they come for interviews or maybe uh, when they have actually done their, you know, uh, on-site on, on -site job trainings and all, uh, I think we should also try and see if, uh, as event owners, we only keep giving them only a backstage, a small job, and then put that in the resume when they come for the interview. Yeah, they yeah. Yeah. The I think in terms of this, uh, I think internship programs also, I think as a body, when we're doing such a, uh, you know. Saying organized internship? Yeah, actually. Yes. And some Maybe create some. Yes. yes. And when we talk about internship, it is not Maybe. just one event or a week. I think maybe a three month proper, you know, understanding about an event right from the ground reality to, from the planning to ground reality. I think uh, that is also uh, is very important. Because uh, I keep interviewing about at least 100 people a year. Okay, from Hyderabad, uh, uh, like even uh, uh, Aaron knows, you know, a couple of institutes have been doing good job. But again, you know, uh, coming to the knowledge about uh, you know the event, you talk about the sound, you talk about light, you talk about anything, even bookish knowledge. I think it's not important properly. I keep visiting most of these institute to give them small small sessions. But I think if, if we can actually add up this organized internship, I think that will also be great. Yes. Absolutely, that was something I'm extremely passionate about. I've have an idea as to how it needs to be done, how do you involve all the members, how do you inform the colleges. So what we're saying is, if we can create an ecosystem where we've got all the industry, which we do have through EMA, over the next year or so, if I can have an ecosystem of the colleges, there's a lot of synergy that can happen. One is, one of them very naturally which comes out is going to be internships and then campus placements. So there's going to be a lot of uh, synergies and that's exactly where we're headed. So, so you are talking what we have as an intent, but I don't think it happening in the first year because we need to do some baby steps. And I think the next year onwards, yes, absolutely with you on that. Yeah. And also I just want to remind you because I come from a strong education, you know, industry and I keep attending more conferences there than very rarely I come to the events. Uh, there's a massive talk worldwide as to why should an individual or the parent fund a child's education when the larger benefit of that education is taken by the organization. Not many think that way, right? So your father paid you the fees, whereas if you're working for IBM, it's IBM is then benefiting from your education. So they're internationally, in fact, the Scandinavian countries, Norway, Sweden, Finland, I, you know, all of them, they, they're, the industry has started funding education. Absolutely. It's happening in a very small niche way, right? But but what I was trying to aim at is uh, you're never going to get out of those hundred the people that you like. You figure out the few things that you're looking for, get them on board and then spend some time, money and efforts in upgrading them. Yeah. Yeah. But the internship, very serious and I think that's a big piece for us to uh, look into in the next uh, year or so. So just a comment. Uh, Sultan, I mean, when you talk of internships and planned internships, when I was speaking to Sanjeev, one of the challenges was the ability of one, the leaders here to let go I, and make time, release the stress, create the bandwidth, get more organized. I think that's a great benefit that you all would get if you all are able to let pass on yes. that work and really take leadership for what you all do best. Uh, Sultan, if we can roll out a module for internship before the tie-ups, it's like the way we have a SOP module, what Ima has been sharing with all the members, a module for internship for three months, because as of today also there are a lot of companies who come yes. with the students with internship, I think that will be a great help for the companies. Sure, sure. And I'm also mindful of the fact that while the student and the college will be enthusiastic about it. We also need to have some guidelines for our own uh, companies as to what you don't get an intern and make them do chai and uh, you know what I mean, right? So we need to also have some guidelines which we are working on. Uh, yeah. Where there's some actual work that they do meet you work. I think this. All right. Great. Okay. Last question. Submission to friends. Whenever we talk about events, it's production, production, production. Kindly give insight on event sales. Yes, yes, absolutely. Client, service. Client servicing and business development. We, 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 we rattle off some of the topics. We lend it when she rattles off. Just yeah, from memory, just rattle off some of the topics for you.
Yeah. So I can remember a lot of these, yeah. uh, you know, right from uh, presentations, taking, understanding the client, understanding the client, right, uh, costings to production to event safety uh, to uh, activations to marketing to uh, wedding to leadership. Yeah. This little of my experience on this, Gautam ji, uh, it comes from the, again, a kid doesn't want to do sales. Okay, so uska koi interest nahi hai jab aata hai to, theek hai? In the process of the course running, we all in past have end result, we made sure that they are good at sales. Okay, so it's, it's changed, they come for glamour and production and that's what is a whole coaching piece with the kids also. I think that's where the, 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 the yeah. let's, let's discuss outside. So, I think uh, by the way, close. coaching is also going to be part of their learning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the next right. assessment. Thank well, you. Well, thank everybody. you very much for being here. You'll hear more from us.